the University of Exeter in England on behalf of GWNet, the Global Women's Network for the Energy Transition. I'm presenting our next portrait for the Energy Transition Role Model Series. This initiative is supported by the German Federal Ministry for Economic Affairs and Energy. So, hello Damilola, thank you for joining us. <laughs> Damilola is the Chief Operating Officer and Co-Founder of Ashland Solar Company Limited. As a young girl, having experienced the loss of a family member due to petrol explosion, Damilola dreamt of eradicating the dependence of Nigeria on fossil fuels and became passionate about alternative energy. Today, Damilola is also the lead instructor of the Ashdam Solar Academy, which to date trained more than 500 practitioners. She has founded the Girls and Women Technological Empowerment Organization, which was previously the Ashdam Solar Initiative. She conveys the Green Tech Girls Summer Boot Camp and initiated the Solar Queen Technical Scholarship Program. Through her initiatives, she has empowered more than 1,500 girls and women in the area of green technologies. Amalola is currently concluding her doctoral research in energy engineering with specialty in renewable energy microgrids and demand side management. She is a Robert Bosch alumni, a Ashoka Changemaker Exchange Fellow, and was recognized as one of the foremost women in renewable energy in Nigeria by the Environment Magazine in the year 2017. She was awarded the Energy Professional of the Year 2018 by the Nigeria Energy Awards. So um, let's get started by discussing your own journey to where you are today. Um, so could you tell us what your journey to sustainable energy entrepreneurship has looked like so far? I, I was motivated from when someone in my family got burnt by fossil fuel explosion then it was very bad almost every time i remember when i was young there was always an explosion maybe on the road tankers explode there's um, petrol scarcity there's increase in fuel price and everybody the nation just keeps stagnant because of the lack of energy access and because of the dependence on fossil fuel at that time so it brought out the thinking of is there any other alternative to fossil fuel that was the beginning Fortunately, I, I got admitted to study physics and solar energy. And while I was studying, I, I brought up the idea of having a company. I had the, the motivation from a young age, and then I studied it. And then the entrepreneurial um, life started. And is that what continues to motivate you in your day-to-day -day work? What's your biggest motivation? Well, the biggest motivation now is seeing the, um, the, the joy in people's face when they have that energy access. It's a sense of fulfillment when it comes to individual basis. And then when it comes to maybe a particular group of people, probably a family or a community, then the, the, kind, of, the kind of increase in their productivity, it's what gives me motivation now. Amazing. Um, so, so far, what has been your severest hurdle and your proudest success? Okay, uh, my biggest challenge, I would say, is um, the way people think that a woman can be in the technical aspect of the energy sector, which was actually brought the motivation of mentoring women and building capacities of women in the industry. That has been the biggest or the biggest a lot of people call into my company and maybe I'm the one that is receiving them. Some of them will tell you, I want to speak to the man in charge. And it's kind of, why do you want to speak to the man in charge? It's, it's, it's a societal thing where I'm, I'm coming from that they believe a particular, a particular type, of, type of industry is meant for men. Yeah. So that has been going up and down, going up and down. And it has been a hurdle. And that has, that has actually motivated me to now to, to start creating impact and start to get mentor women and show them that, yes, they too can be energy experts if they want to be. They can yeah. be wherever they want to be. That, that's part of the hurdle. And that part of the hurdles, there are other types of hurdles like financial assets, financial assets and financial limitation, especially when it comes to women also. Though that is changing now because of the SDG five, some people are trying to like okay balance it. So yeah. that's also that's also another an, another aspect because the, some people believe that women don't don't have the capacity 
to manage the financial aspect of companies. So these are part of the orders yeah. that, we face, that I face. Yeah. And what about your biggest success? Well, my biggest, my biggest success, I would say, is the life of the girls and women that, that I'm touching. Yeah. When, when, when I, when I, when um, the, the girls, like I have a program called Green Tech Girls that I initiated. When the girls come back to me and tell me, oh, um, Auntie Dami, <laughs> they call me Auntie Dami, or Sola Mama, and they tell me, oh, I want to do this. I, now I want to be an electrical engineer. I want to be an electrical engineer because of the program that you did and I came to that program. Or a woman came to me and said, oh, because I went to your Solar Queen program, now I'm starting my own renewable energy company. Now I'm working in this industry. Yeah. That's my success story so far. That's, that's, that's what I count as my big success right now. Amazing. But are there any specific skills that a woman needs? to be a successful, sustainable energy entrepreneur? Specific skills that women need is that, I would say the first thing is, you have to know that you have to continue to build your capacity. When you start, you can't, you can't have all the skills at once. When I started, I didn't have all the skills. I still don't have all the skills. But you have to build your capacity at every time. You have to, start, you have to continue learning. You have to continue learning. I started as as a, as a technical person, as a size oriented person, but now I'm being I'm building my capacity in policy making. I'm building my capacity in finance because for you to have, to be an entrepreneur, you have to know you have to have bits and pieces of all those things for you to be a successful entrepreneur. And the key is continue building your capacity. Don't relent. Don't sit down that, oh, I know it. I already know this aspect. I don't want to know this aspect. To be a successful entrepreneur, you have to know bits and pieces of everything. Based on your experience, what are the opportunities and challenges for women wanting to make a difference as sustainable energy entrepreneurs? The opportunities that, um, that exist for them in the clean energy space is that now, because of SDG 5, a lot of organizations are given, are given um, they are trying to create the balance of involving women, involving women in programs like the program I'm here for now. It was supply stated that if you're a woman, you are encouraged to apply. So there are a lot of gender mainstreaming going on right now in the industry, but you have to have particular skills before you can tap into it. If you don't have those skills, then you can't, you can't assess them. So those are for the skills. And the second question was on uh, orders. I, I would say the orders is actually dependent on the woman. Yeah. It depends on if the woman is limiting herself to something. So if the woman is not limiting herself, then she, then she can do a lot of things. I'll give you an example. I was in a river Rhine area sometimes last week, and um, I, I met some men. I was actually the only woman on the boat and the man was like are you sure you're going to go to this riverine area it's not meant for women but i didn't limit myself i said i can do it i can go and i went and i and i was fulfilled because i was able to see what i wanted to see myself not having to send a man to do it for me yeah so don't limit yourself. That's what I'm going to be saying. And do you um, have a recipe for combining your career um, with also a personal life or family life? Okay. My recipe for combining my personal life and family life is that I have a support system. A good support system if you're a family woman. Now, a woman can decide to be a family woman or not. But if you're a family woman, then you need a good support system for yourself. Yeah. Because you're always going to be on the move and you probably have kids. Kids are really dependent on women. So you need a good support system that you know that the support system will be able to take care of your own front while you are away. Yeah. So that's my recipe for it. Having a good support system, good support system, maybe paid or family, have a good support system. Mm -hmm. That's my recipe for it. Do you think there's anything more the government could do 
in terms of um, a governmental framework to encourage more sustainable energy entrepreneurs? Yeah, I, I, the government, I believe the government should encourage more renewable energy entrepreneurs, especially women, especially women. Sometimes government, it depends on the country though, but some governments, they, they just, they're open to, okay, just supporting entrepreneurs. But then you should have gender targeted schemes and policies for renewable energy entrepreneurs. If you look back on your uh, professional career, is there anything you would have done differently? Uh, for my professional career, I would say that initially I would have, I would have um, studied some other courses apart from the technical aspects. I learned the other, the other aspects of entrepreneurial life on the go because now the new generation they are they are having a lot of mentors so i'm yeah. saying from the beginning as i mean i had a mentor that has guided me on the do's and don'ts the, then i would have had a soft landing so that's what i would have done differently i would have looked for a mentor and then listen to the mentor and and get some skills not just the technical aspects. So you mentioned that um, you would have liked a mentor to tell you kind of the do's and don'ts. What are your most important do's and don'ts um, that you've encountered during your professional journey as an entrepreneur? My do's is that an entrepreneur has to be very disciplined, has to be proactive. Proactive, not reactive. You have to be proactive to situations. So these are part of my, my dues. And then another thing is that an entrepreneur also sees a lot of opportunities and turns it to profit making. So these are some of my dues. Yeah. And then some of my don'ts is that don't start a day without a plan. What is your plan for today? How do you want to be proactive for that day? Write it down, turn it down. These are the things I have to achieve today. How do I achieve it? Is this priority A, priority B, priority C, priority D? And then as you, as, you, as you meet those priorities, as you meet those goals, you tick it off. Yeah. So don't start a day without a good plan. Brilliant. And one final um, question. What message would you give to the next generation of women aspiring to become entrepreneurs in sustainable energy? Okay, I've started during the course of the, of the, of the interview. I'll tell the, the new generation of entrepreneurs that they should not limit themselves. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They should not limit themselves. And they can be whatever they want to be. Don't let the society tell you you can't do this. I've seen this a lot in, in Africa. Societal, society telling a woman, you can't do this, you can't do that, you can't be a mechanical engineer, it's only meant for men. You can be a doctor, you can only be a nurse. A doctor is meant for men, while nurses is meant for women. So don't let the society determine what you want to be. You want to be an entrepreneur. You want to be a clean energy entrepreneur. Anything you want to be, you want to be a doctor, anything you want to be. You want to be science oriented, you can do it. Don't be limited by what people see around you. Well, thank you so much for um, sharing all your insights with us. It was a pleasure to have you and to share everything that you have. The pleasure is all mine. The pleasure is mine.